in Jesus' mighty name. Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for your divineness, Lord. Father, I thank you, Father God, for your glory. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your kingdom, Lord. I thank you for the Holy Revelator, the Holy Spirit, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that your word echoes through eternity, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you know the past, the present, and the future, God. I thank you, Father God, that this word is a preparation for holiness. This word is a preparation for your coming back, Lord, for your beautiful bride, your vibrant, powerful bride that is being prepared, Lord. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your entire word, God. Father, we honor your word. We honor your people, Lord. And we honor Jesus Christ that came, God. That came here, Father. For a thorn, for a crown of thorn, thorns to be placed upon him so we could be crowned with your glory because that's what your word says. Jesus, you came to wear a crown of thorns so we could receive the power to walk this life, Lord, and to be crowned with your glory so we honor you, we love you for it, God. We worship your holy name, Jesus, amen. As I was seeking the Lord this morning, I kept getting a vision of seraphines enthroning the throne of God. And if you've ever looked up a seraphine, they look a little interesting. I'm going to use the word interesting because they're God's creation, and we got to honor it. It's interesting. I, if you don't know what a seraphine looks like, I advise you to go look one up. It is an angel with many, many, many eyes. It's an interesting photograph. And as I was in prayer, I saw the seraphines enthroning the throne of God and saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And I'm like, Lord, I ask a lot of questions. Why the eyes and why so many? And the holy revelator said this, the eyes so they can be kept on me. Our eyes are supposed to be kept on Christ and Christ alone. This world is going to vanish. The word of God says it is like a whisper. It, it's it's going to fly away. And we are going to give an account of our entire life. And God's going to ask us what did you do with it? And I want to be the person that when I come face to face with the king of glory, that he will say, you good and faithful servant. I ask for measures of faith. Because the word of God says that we can please God through our faith. I want to be able to please God. I want to leave so empty, but so full of God's Holy Spirit. Jesus, I am setting a foundation. And I love the fact 
that God has called me, and I have the honor and the privilege to do so. In Jesus' mighty name. You know, I was thinking about my beautiful grandmother this morning. I had the honor and the privilege to lead my beautiful grandmother through healing, many parts of healing, because she had gone through some tragic events in her life. You do not want to go and appear in the pearly gates without being whole. There is healing, there is deliverance, there is power in Christ. There is no need to lack when he's given us his holy word to prevail and excel in him. And what an honor. I don't take this life lightly. And I know that I need a certain pair of shoes to walk in them. And God has called you too. Who are you delivering his message to? My goodness. Our lives should be a living testimony of it. And we are in Jesus' name. Wow, this word, this word, this word, verbatim, verbatim, this word. Father, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father God, for the holy example of your word, God. I thank you, Father, that you are breaking foundations, Lord God that have been set up, Lord God, by ourselves, God. So, Lord, I ask that your for sure word, your foundations of your holy word, God echoes and prevails and is sent out. And, Father, it is being planted right now as a sure foundation, in Jesus' name, amen. August prophetic word, month of divine foundations, examination of your, of your foundations, month of divine foundations, examination of your foundations. Psalms 127 verse 1, Unless the Lord builds the house is the foundation. Those who build in vain, the building won't stand. What does that mean? Anything that you are building on your own is in vain. God the Father wants to be involved in every form and format of building. So it is for sure, and it will stand in Jesus' name. The foundations of the Lord will never change his word, never give way, never let us down. If there is anything that is for sure that will never wither, that will last forever and ever and ever, it is his word. I love the fact that no one can change his word. No one has the power to come against it. It will not stand. He will always prevail and protect his holiness through his word. And we can put our trust in his word. What a blueprint in Jesus' mighty name. 
Matthew 7, 24, the wise and foolish builders. That's the title of this verse. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. God's word is the only sure foundation. Praise the Lord in Jesus' name. Everyone, Luke 6, 47 through 49, everyone who comes to me and hears my words and does them, I will show you what he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug a deep, laid the foundation, who dug deep and laid the foundations of the rock. And when a flood arose, the streams broke against that house and could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not do them is like a man who builds a house on the ground without a foundation. When the streams broke against it, it immediately fell and the ruin of that house was great. Knowing reality with motion and time. Moving under the motion of the Holy Spirit. This is a month of examination of your foundations. What am I talking about? It could be your heart. It could be your home. It could be your mind. It could be a job. <laughs> it's just not doing it, but God wants to shift you because God's not in it. What is your reality right now? What are you facing with motion, what is moving, and time, moving under the motion of the Holy Spirit. God wants to be involved. Do you know what motion means? When he moves, you move. Time. Motion and time. Moving under the motion of the Holy Spirit. It is time to make course corrections for the sanctification and the move of God upon, upon and in your life. What do you have to correct in this month? What is the course correction that has to be made this month. This is for holy purposes, people of God. This is for holy purposes. This is for holy purposes. This is for holy purposes. Has God given you an instruction that you have yet not been able to move in motion and in time? This is for holy purposes purposes how are your children looking right now are they in Christ or out of Christ is there a holy motion a word of God that you are to move into in the timing of the Lord and start speaking to them about the preparation of his coming are your relationships in vain? Or is there a sure foundation in which you are building your relationships? You know, being a Christian, you don't have to announce it. You got to walk into it. I don't tell anybody who I am or what I do. I don't walk around saying that I am a Christian. I tell nobody that I am a Christian. 
I walk in his integrity, I walk in his Holy Spirit, and people will know who you are by the fruits that you are walking in. It is time for people to start walking in who God has called them to be. When power walks in the room, believe me, power will walk in the room. It doesn't take words. It's a motion and it's an action. And it speaks all on itself. God is calling you to walk in such a motion and timing that he has created for you today in Jesus' name. It is time to make course corrections for the sanctification and the move of God upon in and your life. Setting down and sitting down under the foundation that you were founded upon. The word and the physical format that you have laid down as a part of the fundamental foundations, foundation of God upon your life. That's so deep. That's a message on itself. So I'm not going to go there. I'm sure pastor will get his own revelation and he will speak on that. That's just like, that's a script from heaven in Jesus name. Recognizing that you carry a cloak, a mantle, you must keep it pure and blameless before the Lord. Good Lord, what does this mean? Do you know that a mantle represents anointing? Jesus. Do you have a cloak that you can just throw like Paul? And people are going to get healed just by your shadow and your presence. Good Lord. Recognizing that you carry a cloak and a mantle. Jesus, the anointing. The pure anointing, you must keep it pure and blameless before the Lord. See, people might talk about you, but what is God saying about you? Because his word says that we must be blameless before him what does that mean that there is nothing to blame you for a purity a course correction the word of God says that a righteous man falls and you are gonna fall short of the glory of God but the word of God says that when you fall, you get back up. You don't ponder. That's the biggest mistake that people do. They fall and they stay down. And can I tell you something? Those that are down right now, they don't want to get picked up. There are people that don't want God as their sure foundation they don't want to get back up in power in which he has called us to but how many of us know that even the most rebellious the most stubborn there's intercession for in Jesus mighty name good Lord sitting setting time 
Give yourself time during the day. Setting time and biblical foundations as a critical integration and a form a, a permanent part of your life are you setting time before God to seek him are you setting time and biblical foundations as a critical integration and permanent part of your life. We are living in perilous times. We are living under critical timing here on earth. My goodness. I didn't think I was going to live in this era in this time. I'm still in shock that I'm living these times. Can I keep it real? What's happening to our children, the world is trying to do. What is happening right now, I, honest to God, did not think that I would be living in it. My goodness. In Abraham's time, there was a Sodom and there was a Gomorrah. But good God Almighty, that is nothing compared to the time that we are living under. There has never been such an attack on women and on men. Men are being chopped up <laughs> and splatting lipstick all over themselves. I'm going to say it. God gave us our bodies. And right now, women are being chopped up. What God designed. God designed a woman. He fashioned her. How is it possible that men right now are being chopped up from their reproduction system to reproduce. God said, be fruitful and multiply. It's so graphic what's happening to men right now. How do you reverse a physical thing once it is done? It is horrendous what is happening to men right now. More than women. Grabbing a red lipstick and putting it all over their face. It is a disgrace. God created a man for a purpose, and God created a woman for a purpose. But my God, I have never seen the attack on women that God calls his own. There are biblical standards And people are trying to rip them off from speaking the word of the Lord, but not here. And God is freeing up some women in Jesus' name. Setting time and biblical foundations as a critical integration and permanent part of your life. Stay fixed on Jesus and you will prosper as your soul prospers. If you keep your eyes on Jesus and you apply his word, your soul will prosper. What are your eyes fixed on right now? Is it the problem? Is it the situation? Is it your finances? Where are you looking upon? Where should your eyes be and set right now? 
So this portion of your body will prosper. Do you know that our soul is the most important part of our body? Do you know that we are not taking our bodies to heaven? The only thing, that's why the word of God says, renew your mind daily. Wrap a scarlet around your heart of truth and keep it so tight that it will not depart from you. Do you know that the part of our body, the most important part of our body is our soul? This is the only portion that will meet Jesus. This is our only portion that will go to heaven. The word of God says that we will get a new body. And you know the revelation that God gave me? The body that God is going to give us is the body that was meant to reflect him here on earth. So some of us are supposed to gain weight and some other ones are supposed to lose it. <laughs> Let's keep it real. God is going to show you. He's going to give us, I got that revelation. He's going to give us a new body and he's going to say, that's what you could have had. That's what you could have had. If you would have taken care of your holy temple. What is your holy temple? Our body that houses the Holy Spirit. We're gonna have, we're gonna giggle and laugh, and some of us are gonna cry. <laughs> and some of us are gonna be like, Yes, I did it. <laughs> not everybody's supposed to be thin, and not everybody's supposed to have a certain body. It's the one that God created and formed for you. We don't all look the same. We are just made in his image. But I was like, whoa, God. He's like, yeah, I'm going to show you <laughs> what you could have had. <laughs> if you would have just taken care of. Your holy temple. God calls it holy. God calls your body holy unto him. Why? Because it houses. See, our soul is here and our Holy Spirit is here. Why wouldn't you take care of what houses the Holy Spirit? Jesus. We got some work to do, people of God. We got some work to do. This is a progression. We got some holy, holy, holy work to do. And Jesus mighty name. Stay fixed on Jesus and you will prosper as your soul prospers. Keeping whole before the Lord keeps you intact before him. It allows the Holy Spirit to compose the melody of your life, pure, holy, and blameless. I love this. Will you allow God to keep and keep and keep working on you? Whole, nothing missing nothing broken if your heart is broken God wants to make it whole I love the fact that we have the ability to be healed I love the fact that we have the ability to be delivered out of an old mindset. Keeping whole before the Lord keeps you intact before him. It allows the Holy Spirit to compose the melody 
of your life, pure, holy, and blameless. I think about worship leaders. See, worship leaders, they pull down and usher the presence of God. And when they pull down, it goes right through them, and they are to usher back to heaven. There is a purity. I cannot imagine. I want to be careful with my words. Someone so addicted and so broken, and when I think of addictions, every form of addiction could be. Standing here, called by God Almighty, broken, and not knowing the healer, but trying to bring people into healing. It just won't happen. How many people are struggling on pulpits trying to bring people and usher them to heaven broken, deprived of power, deprived of healing? Jesus. Keeping whole before the Lord keeps you intact. If you're whole, you can testify and you can bring others into divine wholeness. It allows the Holy Spirit to compose the melody of your life, pure, holy, and blameless in Jesus' name. Wow. No longer seen the end of the stick, but seen the sword, the full sword, the word of God that has been placed in your hands. Can you thank God for what you have? I was talking to somebody yesterday. And I was like, can you just be grateful? You may not have it all right now. Because God is not going to entrust you with things that you will not comply to. Can you be thankful that you have a car? Can you be thankful that you have a place of your own? Can you be thankful that God is faithful? Can you be thankful that God pulled you out and brought you through? Can you be thankful that people are in intercession on your behalf? Can you be thankful with what you have been given? Be grateful and be thankful. Why do you always got to see things in a negative lens? What about all the good, the majestic, and the powerful Holy Spirit that hovers and covers over you? Because even in your ridiculousness, God loves you and God covers you and God complies to the prayer, my God, to the prayers, to the prayers and the intercession that is being sent out on your behalf in Jesus mighty name no longer seeing the end of the stick but seeing the word the full sword the word of God that has been placed in your hands good God almighty Jesus Drawing the lines between truth and lies. Reality and fiction. Oh, that devil loves to tell his fiction stories. False and unrealistic expectations. 
good God Almighty, drawing the lines between truth and lies. See, truth is here. The lies are here. The biggest mistake that Christians do as they, they graft them and they put them all together. And can I tell you, lies and truth are not meant to be gambled with. It's like putting a red putty and a blue Play-Doh and mixing it and putting it all together and creating your false reality and the fiction teller. Good God Almighty. Who is the fiction teller? Satan himself. He is the accuser of the brethren. Who is accusing you? My God. Who is accusing you? Drawing the lines between truth, truth, and lies. Reality and fiction. False and unrealistic expectations. I had to do an examination. Oh my God. I had to do an examination of unrealistic expectations. I had to do a deep, 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 deep dive to truth and lies, reality and fiction, false and unrealistic expectations. Good God. I was drawing... Whew. trying to draw water out of a dry well. I was drawing, trying to draw water <laughs> out of a dry well. And the holy revelator said this, false and unrealistic expectations. You cannot take anybody where they don't want to go. And I had to repent for that. I don't care. God doesn't care how much I want to take and draw from. Through in people, when they don't want to be drawn and they don't want to burst out. I said, God, forgive me. You called them, you anointed them, but they don't want to burst out. I repent, God, because if they won't do it for you, what makes me think that they will do it for me? I repent for false and unrealistic expectations. If they don't want to put their finances in, bib in biblical standards, if they don't want to sow to reap a harvest, who am I? Who am I? Who am I? If they don't want to keep their mind clean, good God. Truth and lies, reality and fiction. The word of God is real. Satan is the fiction teller. The Bible says, be careful when you lie, people of God. Be careful when you tell a lie. A tattletale lie. Be careful. This is for the bride of Christ. Be careful when you think that it is innocent to tell a white lie, what the world calls it. And they also want to say that white magic, <laughs> this is ridiculous. 
is not bad. <laughs> there's black magic and there's white magic. Okay, rub your rocks together. Pop, 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 pop. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Good Lord, it's not even authorized. <laughs> Go ahead and rub your little crystals together and hold on your St. Mary. <laughs> Mary, 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 marry me. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful when you are telling a lie and you are not speaking the truth of the Lord. Be careful. Be careful when you tell a lie against the beloved. Be careful that you are speaking something that God is not speaking. Be careful. Be careful when you are putting your lips and repeating what Satan is saying instead of what the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you something? I want to deliver some people today. When you tell a lie, when you repeat what Satan is saying, that's because you have not spent time with our good Lord Jesus. You haven't hit the floor. You haven't gotten revelation to speak the word of the Lord. And to speak the truth of the Lord, they shall prosper. They shall prosper. They shall prosper. They shall, they may be going through a hard time. But God says they're coming through. They're coming through. And they're going to make it. They're going to prosper because I'm prospering their soul for such a time as this. Be careful that you are not repeating the lies of Satan upon God's holy people. I've seen this throughout the years. Good Lord, I'm going back 26 years. I remember sitting in a counselor's room. I was paying top notch. It was hundreds of dollars per hour. It was a retired doctor in psychology. I was recommended to her. She was retired. She had this beautiful home. And I used to go weekly and seek God, uh, seek supposedly wise counsel. And I remembered this retired doctor in psychology literally profess Satan's <sighs> words I can tell now because I know the truth of God but I remember this lady oh that situation's never going to change once people are like this they're always gonna be like this I paid hundreds and hundreds and thousands of dollars to seek truth to seek at that time worldly counsel be careful who you authorize to speak into your life and over your life. Be careful what you authorize. Because if you know how heaven works, everything is authorized or unauthorized. Satan is unauthorized authorized God is authorized he is a created being he is a fallen angel and the word of God says that we are made higher than the angels we are created in God's image 
in Jesus' name. Be careful what you are imaging in Jesus' mighty name. Fiction and false and unrealistic expectations no longer entertaining the deception of others by keeping heed to the word of God. See, there are two realms going on here. Deception is a realm. It's actually a motion, in a matter of fact. How can you integrate them both? You can't. You can't. Truth, fact, lies, and deception. You are going to be pretty double-minded if you are operating and trying to work with these two words together. You can't. You can't. You can't. You're either deceived or you're taking heed to the word of God. Do you believe that God can heal you? Are you taking heed? Are you, I, I see like heed, like you're going fast paced and ain't nothing stopping you because it is the truth of God. Are you taking heed to the word of God? Can you believe for children? Can you believe that what God, what God started, he can finish it? Do you believe that God can renew your mind? And if it's so far off, he will give you a new mind. Not everything can be restored. Some things have to be made new. Keeping heed to the word of God. What has God told you? And are you taking heed to it? Or are you allowing deception to creep in? The devil is a liar. We're taking heed to the word of God. And we're running full, fast pace, moving forward in Jesus' name. Knowing the characteristics of God, applying them and moving upon his character character and his defined word. Do you know how God operates? Do you know how he speaks? Sometimes you take a strong word and you can't take it. If I walk to Denise... And I say, Denise, it is a for sure thing. Denise, it is a for sure thing. It will happen. It will prosper. It will come through. And it will go through. Do you know that God speaks like that? Sometimes I have to auto-correct people. Do you know that God, do you know God's character? Do you know that sometimes he will whisper? Can I tell you something? The majority of my time, according to my character, and the character of God, his word is firm. But can I tell you something? He's got a low whisper too. And we need both. We need his Holy whispers. The character of God. I've noticed personally in my life when God is urgent and he wants to do an urgent thing at that moment, most of the time, it is going to be a loud, profound, clear, crisp word and when I'm toned down and I'm just meditating and I'm just seeking him and I'm already in his presence it's going to be a low whisper 
Can you define how God speaks to you? Can you know his character? Read the Bible. When he rebuked the Israelites, it was firm. And he made some crash corrections. And one of them, he opened up the earth and he swallowed, swallowed the perpetrators of God's people. And he's so graphic and he's so mighty that when someone lied upon his people and he wanted to enslave them, he opened up the Red Sea and he swallowed those dirty perpetrators again. Can I tell you something? It is best for you to honor the kingdom and be a part of it than to come against it and see the consequences. See, God is calling everybody. It is God's will for all to respond. But can I tell you, hell is running pretty deep right now. See, hell was made for Satan and his falling angels. But can I tell you something? Hell is running pretty deep right now. And if you don't speak the word and take heed to the word of God and you're not going out and preaching the gospel and leading people to Christ, when you are the only answer. Good God Almighty. Good God Almighty. That's why you have to be an ambassador. What is an ambassador? You must know who you are at all times. And you must walk under the integrity of heaven and speak and do only what heaven has authorized and is calling you to. We are to call the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. And give everybody an opportunity to receive him. My God. Hell is running pretty deep. But heaven must be full of souls because my dear beloved that is all that we are taking you ain't taking your nice little car or your so so called house or belongings or you know that pretty ring that they bought you you ain't taking anything the only thing that you are going to be accounted for is the souls that you are taking to heaven and that you introduced to the king of glory, the king of kings, and the Lord of lords. Good God almighty. What does the kingdom of darkness have to do with the kingdom of light? Nothing. Good Lord. Go on vacation. But he better, there, he better be there with you. Go out to eat, but he better be sitting right next to you. Walk with Jesus. Go wherever he goes and wherever he's taking you. There are things and engagements that are completely irrelevant. No Jesus. If Jesus is not there, there's no Jesus, period. Isaiah 66, 1 through 2. This is what the Lord says. Heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house you, where is the house you will build for me? Here it is, God. Where will my resting 
place be? Where does God dwell? Has not my hand made all these things? And so they came into being, declares the Lord. These are the ones I look on with favor. Who? With favor, those that are building and those that are creating a resting place. Jesus. And so they came into being, declare the Lord, declares the Lord. These are the ones I look on with favor. Those are humble and contrite in spirit and who tremble at my word. Good Lord. Humble and contrite in spirit and who trembles at my word. What does that mean? Do you revere the holy word of God? Are you taking it seriously? If you were to die today, would you make it into heaven? Or would your eyes open up in hell? I am so sorry for these graphic words, but these are alarming times. Are you full of lies or are you clothed in righteousness and in truth? If you were to die today, would your, would your eyes open up in heaven or open up in hell? It will be determined on how you are living and what you are believing or what you're walking truth in the word of God. This is alarming. Why? Because God is sounding his alarm. And I pray that we are in right standing and we are bringing others in right standing. Because if you love the Lord, the sheer evidence will be that you will follow after him and do his will. What is the will of God for you? Are you making decisions without the integration of God? Are you going where he is not going? Or are you going where he is leading you to? Are you taking care of your holy temple because it houses the Holy Spirit? Are you taking account for your soul? Because like our beautiful King David said, it is well with my soul. It is okay to be conflicted, but do something about it with his holy word. Life will happen. You will fall short, but are you getting up? Are you living in a lie? Or do you have the helmet of salvation upon you? Do you have the belt of truth and the full armor of God upon you? We are supposed to be people of integrity. People are supposed to know the wholeness of the Lord through you. And the truth of God through you. 
and the love. The love. The love. The love. The love. The love of God compelling all over you. My goodness. I know so many people that only love their children, but they don't love nobody else's. I hate to say it, but I must say it. They only love their own, but they don't love God's people. They only love what is theirs, but they don't love what is others. And we are the kingdom of God. The only people that are going with you are those that receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Do the will of the Father. It is going to be a very, very scary time for those that think that they are there, but will not be there, not here, because we are preaching the full word of the Lord and the full gospel in the name of Jesus for his glory and his glory alone in Jesus' mighty name, who tremble at his word, in Jesus' name. The month of divine foundations. <sighs> this word is pretty heavy. And I pray that you take heed to it. What are you standing on? Are you upon the rock? Are you off of it? One of the foundations is the rock, Jesus Christ. Life is not perfect. Life is not perfect. And life happens. And what are you going to do when it does? How are you going to react? Are you only standing when it is good for you? We are not that people. We are not those people. That we only stand upon the rock when it is convenient. I've had so many things happen in my life. And for those of you that know me personally, I have these famous words. I stand. When life happens... I stand when people say things about me, when people do things against me, and not here, out there. I stand. The only thing that I have as a firm foundation is the word of God. Are you upon the word of God? I can't stand it. When people are sick in the mind, I don't understand when people are double-minded. I cannot relate because I allowed the worker of my soul to undivide the lies and bring me into truth. I can't understand how you cannot stop smoking. What you, know, you shouldn't be smoking. Because I allowed the holy revelator to get me out of that addiction. Do you know that alcoholism runs in my lineage? But do you know that I put a stop to it? 
Do you know that alcoholism runs, but it got trapped and halted off of my lineage. I made that decision not to kiss the devil on the lips anymore and swallow his saliva. The devil is a liar. My grandfather, right before he passed away on my mom's side, his entire life, successful, welder, business owner, the alcoholism took him down. And right before a little fraction of his life, he got right. But it was only a few months before he passed. I don't understand how the kingdom is suffering from illness when we have the heal. I don't understand because his word says you don't have to be a cheater. His word says that you don't have to be a liar. The word of God says that you don't have to be a thief. The only one that it comes to kill, steal, and destroy is Satan. Who are you working with? The only one that lies is Satan himself. Who are you working with? Why are you di living and dipping in this double life? You're here today speaking to the bride. You're here today and then gone tomorrow in a different lifestyle that you think you can hide before the Lord. They all fall. They all fall. How many pastors have been up cheating, scandaling, but they all fall? Why do you think that you can cheat the word of God? And why do you think that you can cheat on God as if he doesn't know it. When the word of God says that he is an all-knowing God, I'm speaking to the bride that won't divide the workmanship of his kingdom any longer. Father, I thank you, God. Father, we submit ourselves unto you, God, like your word says. Your word says to submit unto you. And God, we submit as the bride of Christ unto you. And Father, Jesus Christ, we say we love you, the lover of our souls. You love our souls. Because that's the only thing that is authorized in heaven. Lord, I ask God that we would steward all that you have given us. And we're all different, God. But we're all caring the same thing. And that is the acceptance that we have accepted through Jesus Christ, that you are our Lord and Savior, that we receive you, Holy Spirit, into our lives. And we give you our lives, God. Jesus. Your word says that our life is not our own once we receive you, God. Let us take accountability 
for who you have called us to be upon this earth, God. And I thank you, God, for the many fruits and the many talents, God, that you have given us, God. Father, your word says that our faith pleases you, God. And I am believing that in this place right now, God, you are integrating us, God with your holiness Lord you are integrating us God with your holy word God you are integrating us God with your kingdom God you are renewing minds God and you are setting them free through your word and for some of us God our old minds cannot take us any further and it's not enough to be renewed. We need a new mind, God. So Father, I thank you, Father God, for the new minds that are coming down from heaven, God. And you are giving us a transplant of minds right now, God. Because Lord, where you want to take us, God, we can't go the same. Father, I ask that you would bring a holy reverence upon your people and the bride of Christ, Lord. I ask, Father God, that people would desire in the bride of Christ to be made whole and healed, God. And take heed to your word, Jesus. Father, I thank you for deliverance, God. I thank you, Father God, for your loud and firm foundations. I thank you, Father God, for your loud and firm voice of love, that you correct those that you love. And I thank you, Father God, for the holy whispers of your Holy Spirit, God. I thank you, Father, that you are so faithful and that you are breaking generational laws and legislations, God. Father, make it on to your people. Put it in them to have an oomph and a power and authority to say no more. Break in the name of Jesus. Render void in Jesus' mighty name, pick up your sword of truth and prevail against the gals of hell. In Jesus' mighty name. Your word says that the gates of hell will not prevail against your bride, your church, God. It is a firm foundation. And I thank you, God, that you are firm. In Jesus' name, Father, begin, God, to give your people such a fight to fight against the opposer of the brethren and lies. You could be healed. You could be restored. Let the dead come to life. Let the blind see, let the deaf hear, and let the lame walk. We thank you, Lord, for all the miracles of heaven, God. We thank you for your presence, God. And we thank you, Lord, that you are not done and that you are for sure. Thank you, God, for your truth, God. We honor you. We love you, and we revere you. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, I just ask right now in this room <clears throat> that for every person that's in this room today, God, that you would not let them leave this month without being made whole. 
for every parent that has a child that's been broken. For every parent that is a child that's broken. For every family that's been broken. For every marriage that's struggling. And for every marriage that's seemingly been defeated. Lord, I ask right now that those are the realities we deal with, but we don't really like to face them. Everything that the devil says is not good and not clean and is dirty, God. Everything we tried to hide, everything that we've tried or he's tried to make us feel guilty about or ashamed of. So we have to make up some ultra ego, something else. Wouldn't it be nice just to come home to your family and know that they're home? Know that you don't have to say any words or avoid any words. And that you just be accepted. Because that's what heaven is like. Heaven's like every person seated at that table was meant to be there. Created by God, saved by God, and loved by God. So Lord, I just thank you that this month you would make every family whole in this place. Make them whole. Lord, I ask that though your phones would ring this month. And the people that have had not had the guts to call you will call you and make things right. And for those of us who are struggling inside with our own fantasies, tear down those walls, God, and let us pick up the phone and let's ask for forgiveness and let's start to bridge, build bridges where our past would only make walls. Lord, we bless you today. Strengthen us as we depart from this place but not from your presence. In Jesus' name we pray.